Hello. We're coming to you from the campus of the Australian National University where it is a beautiful early summer morning. We acknowledge that we are on the land of the Ngunnawal people and we pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We'll be reading to you from Odyssey Book 12 which takes up the story of Odysseus as he returns from the underworld and is given instructions by Circe as to how to overcome the obstacles he has to face. Now after our ship had left the stream of the river Okeanos and had come to the wave of the broad sea, we reached Aiaia, the dwelling of the early dawn in her dancing lawns and the risings of the sun. There we beached our ship on the sand and went forth upon the seashore and there we fell asleep waiting for the bright dawn. As soon as rosy-fingered dawn appeared, I sent forth my men to the house of Circe to fetch the body of the dead Alpenor. Straight away then we cut billets of wood and gave him burial where the headland runs furthest out to sea, sorrowing and shedding tears. And when the dead man was burned and with him his armour, we heaped up a mound and dragged onto it a pillar. And on top of the mound we planted his well-shaped oar. As we busied about these several tasks, Circe learned of our return from the house of Hades and speedily she arrayed herself and came and her handmaidens brought with her bread and meat and flaming red wine. And the beautiful goddess stood in our midst and spoke among us, saying, Rash men who have gone down alive to the house of Hades to meet death twice when other men die but once. Come. Let's eat food and drink wine here today, for tomorrow, when dawn comes, you shall set sail, and I will point out the way and describe to you each obstacle, so that you do not suffer pain and woes through wretched ill-contriving, either by sea or on land. So she spoke, and our proud hearts consented. So then all day long, till the setting of the sun, we sat feasting on abundant meat and sweet wine, but when the sun set and darkness came on, the men lay down to rest beside the stern cables of the ship. Circe took me by the hand, and leading me apart from my dear comrades, she made me sit, and she herself lay down close beside me, and she asked me for the whole story. And I told her all in due order. Autar epei potamoio lipen roon okeanoio, neus apodiketo kyma talasses euruporoio, ne son taiaies, otite us erigeneies, oikia kai koiroi, eisi kai antolai e elioio, nea men entel tontes ekelsamen em samatoisin, ek de kai autoi beman epihrengmini talasses. Enter da pubrixantes e meinam e o dian, e mos de rigeneia pane rhododactylos eos, de tot egon hetarus pro iein es domet e circes, oi semenae necron, el penore tetne oota. Pitrus dae psatamontes, hot acrotaten pro ec acte, taptomen ac numenoi taleron catedacru ceontes. Autar epei necros tecae, cae teucea necru, tumbon keuantes, ca episteles erusantes, pexamen acrotatoi tumboi eu eres eretmon. He meis menta hecista di eipomen, udar circen ex ae idio eltontes eletomen, alla mal oca eltentunamene, hamadam pipoloi peron autei, si ton cae, Cae crea pola ca ai topa oinon erutron. He de mesoi sta sa meteuda dia teaon, Sketlioi hois do ontas hypeltete do ma idao, Distaneis hote talloi hapax tneis us antropoi. Al agetes tiete bromen cae pinete oinon, Auti pane merioi, hamade oi paini menepi, Pleus est autarego deixo hodon, e de hecasta se maneo, hinameti cacofra piei alegeinei, e halos e epiges alges et epema patontes, 
Os epat hem min aut epat hei teto tymos agenor. Hos totem men propan emar es e elion katedynta. Hem ete dain nyt menoi krea tas pete kai metu hedy. Emos de elios katedyr kai epiknepos elten. Hoi men koi mesanto para prunesia neos. He deme keiros helusa pilon an aponos pin hetairon. Eisete kai proselecto kai exere einen hekasta. Autar ego te panta katamoiran katelexa. Then queenly Circe spoke to me and said, You have gotten through those things. Now listen to what I have to tell you, and may some god keep it in your mind. First, to the sirens you will come, who beguile all men who come across them. Whoever draws near to them unwittingly and hears the siren's voice, he will never return. His wife and little children could stand at his side rejoicing, but the sirens so beguile him with their clear-toned song. They sit in a meadow, and about them is a great heap of bones of mouldering men, and round the bones the skin is shriveling. You must row past them, anoint the ears of your men with kneaded balls of sweet wax so they cannot hear. But if you yourself have the desire to listen, let them bind you hand and foot in the swift ship upright in the step of the mast and have them fasten the ropes to the mast itself. Then, with the light, you can listen to the song of the voice of the two sweet sirens. And if you implore your comrades to free you, let them bind you tighter with yet more bonds. Once your comrades have rowed past the sirens, I cannot tell you where your course should lie. Ponder it in your mind. I will describe to you both ways. For on the one hand are beetling crags, and against them roars the great wave of dark-eyed Amphitrite, the plank tide do the blessed gods call these. That way not even the winged things may pass, not even the timorous doves that bear ambrosia to Father Zeus. The smooth rock snatches away every one of these, and the father sends in another to make up the tale. That way, no ship of men ever yet escaped that tried it, but the planks of ships and bodies of men are whirled confusedly by the waves of the sea and the blasts of baneful fire. One seafaring ship alone has passed thereby, that Argo, famed of all, on her voyage from Aetes, and even her the wave would speedily have dashed there against the great crags had not Hera sent her through, for Jason was dear to her. Now on the other path are two cliffs, one of which reaches with its sharp peak to the broad heaven and a dark cloud surrounds it. This never melts away, nor does clear sky ever surround that peak in summer or in harvest time. No mortal man could scale it or set foot upon the top, not even if he had 20 hands and feet, for the rock is smooth as if it were polished. And in the midst of the cliff, is a dim cave turned toward the west, toward Erebus, even where you shall steer your hollow ship, glorious Odysseus. Not even a man of might could shoot an arrow from the hollow ship so as to reach into that vaulted cave. In there dwells Scylla, yelping terribly. Her voice is indeed the voice of a newborn whelp, but she herself is an evil monster. No one would be glad at the sight of her, no, not even if it were God that met her. She has twelve feet, all misshapen, and six necks exceedingly long, and on each one an awful head, and in each three rows of teeth, thick and close, and full of black death. Up to her middle, she is hidden in the hollow cave, but she holds her head out beyond the dread chasm and fishes there, eagerly searching around the rock for dolphins and sea dogs and whatever beast she may happen to catch. Such creatures as deep moaning Amphitrite rears in multitudes past counting. By her no sailors yet can boast that they have fled unscathed in their ship, for with each head she carries off a man, snatching him from the dark proud ship. But the other cliff you will see, Odysseus, is lower. They are close to each other. You could even shoot an arrow across. And on it is a great fig tree with rich foliage. But beneath this, divine Charybdis sucks down the black water. Three times a day she belches it forth, and three times she sucks it down terribly. 
May you not be there when she sucks it down, for no one could save you from ruin. No, not even the earth shaker. Draw very close to Scylla's cliff and drive your ship past quickly, for it is better by far to mourn six comrades in your ship than all of them together. So she spoke, but I made answer and said, Come, I beg you, goddess, tell me this thing truly, if in some way I might escape from dread Charybdis and ward off that other one, Scylla, when she works harm to my comrades. So I spoke, and the beautiful goddess answered and said, Rash man, now once again your heart is set on the deeds of war and on toil. Will you not yield even to the immortal gods? Scylla is not mortal, but an immortal bane. She is dread and dire and fierce and not to be fought with. There is no defence. To flee from her is the bravest course. For if you hang back to arm yourself by the cliff, I fear that she may again dart forth and attack you with as many heads and sees as many men as before. No, row past with all your might and call upon Cratais, the mother of Scylla, who bore her to be a bane to mortals. Then will she keep her from darting forth again. And then you will come to the island Thrinachia. There in great numbers graze the cattle of Helios and his goodly flock, seven herds of cattle and as many fair flocks of sheep and 50 in each. These bear no young, nor do they ever die, and goddesses are their shepherds, fair-tressed nymphs, Phaethusa and Lampetier, whom beautiful Naira bore to Helios, Hyperion. Their honoured mother, when she had borne and reared them, sent them far off to Thrinachia to dwell and to watch over the flocks of their father and his sleek cattle. If you leave these unharmed and keep your mind on the homeward journey, you may indeed reach Ithaca, though in disarray. But if you harm them, then I foretell ruin for your ship and for your comrades. And even if you yourself escape, you will come home late and in a bad way after losing all your comrades. So she spoke and presently gold-throne dawn appeared. Then the beautiful goddess departed up the island, but I went to the ship and roused my comrades to embark and to loose the stern cables. So they went on board straight away and sat down upon the benches, and sitting well in order, they struck the grey sea with their oars. And to help us along, in the wake of our dark proud ship, a fair wind that filled the sail, a goodly comrade, was sent by fair tressed Circe, that dread goddess with human speech. So as soon as we had made fast all the tackling throughout the ship, we sat down and the wind and the helmsman guided the ship. So then I spoke among my comrades, grieved at heart. Friends, since it is not right that just one or two alone should know the prophecies that Circe, the beautiful goddess, told me, I will tell you. With you knowing them too, we may either die or, shunning death and fate, escape. First she bade us avoid the voice of the wondrous sirens and their flowery meadow. Me alone she bade to listen to their voice, but you should bind me with strong bonds, that I may abide fast where I am, upright in the step of the mast, and fasten the ropes to the mast itself. And if I employ you to free me, bind me tighter with yet more bonds. Thus I repeated all these things and told them to my comrades. Meanwhile the well-built ship speedily came to the isle of the two sirens, for a fair and gentle wind bore her on. Then and there the wind ceased, and there was a windless calm, and a god lulled the waves to sleep. But my comrades rose and furled the sail, and stowed it in the hollow ship, and then they sat at the oars and made the water white with their polished oars of fur. I with my sharp sword cut into small bits a great round cake of wax, and kneaded it with my strong hands, and soon the wax grew warm, 
forced by the strong pressure and the rays of the sun god Helios to Perion. I anointed with this the ears of all my comrades in turn, and they bound me in the ship hand and foot upright in the step of the mast, and fastened the ropes to the mast itself, and they sat and struck at the grey sea with their oars. When we were as far distant as a man can make himself heard when he shouts, driving swiftly on our way, the sirens caught sight of our swift ship drawing near, and they raised their clear-toned song. Come hither, if you dare, renowned Odysseus, great glory of the Achaeans. Stay your ship and listen to the voices of us too. For never yet has any man rowed past this isle in his black ship until he has heard the sweet voice from our lips. Yes, he has joy of it and goes on his way a wiser man. For we know all the toils that in wide Troy and the Argives and Trojans endured through the will of the gods. And we know all things that come to pass upon the fruitful earth. So they spoke, sending forth their beautiful voices, and my heart was desired to listen. And I bade my men free me, nodding to them with my brows, but they fell to their oars and rowed on. And presently Perimedes and Eurylochus rose and bound me with yet more bonds and drew them tighter. When they had rowed past the sirens, and we could no more hear their voices or their song, straight away my trusty comrades took away the wax with which I had anointed their ears and freed me from my bonds. When we had left behind the island, I saw smoke and a great billow, and heard a booming. Then from the hands of my men in their terror the oars flew, and splashed one and all in the swell, and the ship stood still where it was, where they no, when they no longer plied with their hands the tapering oars. But I went through the ship and cheered my men with gentle words, coming up to each man in turn. Friends, long before this we have known great dangers. Surely this evil that besets us now is no greater than when the Cyclops penned us in his hollow cave by brutal strength and from him we escaped through my valour and counsel and wit. These dangers too, I think we will live to remember. Come now, do as I say. Keep your seats on the benches and smite with your oars the deep surf of the sea. Hope that Zeus may grant us to escape and avoid this death. And to you, helmsmen, I give this command. Remember it since you have the steering oar of this hollow ship. From this smoke and surf, keep the ship well away and hug the cliff, lest, before you know it, the ship swerves off to the other side and you cast us into destruction. Der tot egon heteroisi meteudon acnumenos ker, o piloi, u gar cre hena idmena u de du oius, tes patar moi kirke, mute satodia tiaon, al ereo menego, hina e dotes e ketanomen. Eken ale wamanoi tanaton kai kera pygoimen, seirenon memproton anoge tes pesia on tongon, ale wastai kai leimon antemoenta. Hoion em e noge ap akuemen, alla me desmoi des satin argaleoi, oprem pedon autoti mimno, orton en histopede. Ek dau tu peira tenepto, eide ke liso mai humeas lusai te ke lewo. Humeis de pleonesi tot en desmoi si piesdein, etor ego ta he casta legon he taroi si pipauskon. Topra de carpalimos exi keto neus eu erges, ne son seireno in, epige gar uros apemon, Autike epeit animos mene pausato e de galene, e pleto ne ne mie. Koi mes se de cumate daimon, anstantes detaroi, neos histia me rustanto. Cae tamen enne itla purei tesan, hoi deperet ma hes domenoi leucainon hudor, xesteis elateisin. Autare go, Keroio megantrokon oxe i calcoi, tuta diat mexas kersi stibareisi piesdon, apsa diai neto keros, epekeleto megalehis, e eliu tauge hyperioni da o wanactos, exeies detaroisin e puata passin aleipsa. Hoi denne i medesan homu keiras te podaste, orton en histopedei. Ek dau tu peirat anepton, autoi des domenoi poli en haletupton eret mois.
Dear YouTubers, we're teacher and students from Fudang University, Shanghai, China. It is our pleasure to bring to you the second half of the Twelfth Book of Odyssey. I'm Chao Yuan from Fudang University, Department of History. The section I'm going to read is line 223 to line 293, Book 12 in Chinese. 我这样说可我却未见他任何踪影大海咆哮奔流有如愚人在突出的岩石上扔下耳石我们躲过可怖的卡里布里斯悬崖和斯普拉我于是心情忧伤地对同伴们说你真勇敢精力充沛他们都会把船只毁坏即使被你神秘的一人现在让我们还是听从昏明的黑夜放暗准备晚餐然后再快船边安睡明朝再登船继续航行于辽阔的大海 Hi everyone, I'm Luli Ling from the Department of Philosophy I'm going to read lines 294 to 365 奥利洛克斯这样说：“同伴们各个称赞，这是我知道恶神在制造了种种祸殃。于是我开言说出有一飞翔的话语。”奥利洛克斯为我坚持，你们逼迫我，但你们现在得对我发一个庄重的誓言
白金造的船只停进港湾里，清澈的流水近旁，同伴们纷纷走下船，在那里一起熟悉的准备可口的晚餐。在他们满足了饮酒吃肉的欲望之后，他们怀念起亲爱的同伴。伴侣们被斯库拉从空心船抓走吞噬，不禁放声哭泣。他们就这样在哭泣中进入成城的梦境，即使三分夜沉胜一分，众星辰下沉，吉云神宙斯掀起一股狂暴的风流，带来无际的疾风暴雨、浓黑的乌云，笼罩陆地和枯老林，昏暗从天降临。当那出生的有玫瑰色手指的黎明降临时，我们把船拖上岸，吸进空旷的石穴。那里是神女们优美的歌舞和聚会的地方。我召集同伴，在告诫他们这样说：“朋友们，快船里除有食品，也有饮料。我们切勿动牛群，以免骤然降灾祸。这些牛和肥壮的羊群属于可畏的神明，赫里奥斯，他无所不见，无所不闻。”我这样说，说服了他们勇敢的心灵。整整一个月，南风劲吹，不见雨停息。无任何其他风向，只见东风和南风。当大家还有食品和暗红的酒酿的时候，同伴爱惜生命，没有去动那些牛。当船上储备的各种食物耗尽告罄时，他们便不得不开始游荡，猎获野物，寻找游鱼、飞鸟和一切可猎获的食品，借助弯鱼钩，饥饿折磨着他们的空肚皮。这时，我独自登上海岸。祈求神明们，求某位神明启示我一条规范的途程。当我沿着海岛行走，以远离同同伴。我洗净双手，在一处避风的地方，开始向拥有奥林波斯众神明祈求。神明们把深沉的睡眠撒上我的眼睑。欧里洛克斯这时向同同伴们提出坏建议：饱受苦难的同伴们，现在请听我说。任何死亡对于不幸的凡人都可憎，饥饿使死亡的命运降临却尤为不幸。让我们从赫里奥斯的牛群中挑起头上好牛，祭奠掌管广阔天域的不死的众神明。如果我们终能回到故乡，故乡伊塔卡，我们将立即给赫里奥斯、许佩里昂建造豪华的神殿，献上许多贵重的祭品。如果神明为他的这些直角牛生怨恨，想毁掉我们的船只，其他神明也赞成。那我宁可让狂波吞没顷刻间死去，也不愿在这荒凉的长岛上长期受折磨。欧里洛克斯这样说，同伴们个个称赞。他们立即从附近的赫里奥斯牛群中挑出几头上好牛，距离黑手船不远，播放着那些美丽的直角宽额壮牛。他们围着牛群站住，祈求众神明。从一棵高大的橡树摘下一些嫩叶，因为坚固的船上已没有洁白的大麦。他们做完祷告，把牛宰杀剥皮，割下牛的腿肉，在上面盖上网油，网油覆盖两层，上面再放上生牛。他们没有甜酒、内祭、烧烤的生肉，便用净水祭奠，再制烤全部肺脏。他们焚过腿肉，尝过各种肺脏。Hi everyone, I'm Yuxin from Fudan University Department of Foreign Languages and Literature. Today I'm going to read from line 366 to 425. 这时深沉的睡眠离开我的眼睑，我立即向快船和神庙大海岸滩跑去。当我来到距离峭尾船不远的地方，向我迎面飘来炙热的热腾腾香气，我对不死的神明大声发出怨诉。天神宙斯和其他永生长乐的众神明，你们让我沉沉睡去，加害于我。我的同伴们留下，犯了严重的亵渎。穿长裙的南皮提亚迅速前去报告。赫利奥斯、史菲利昂，我们宰杀了他的牛。太阳神心中愤怒，立即对众神明这样说：“天神宙斯和其他永生长乐的众神明，请看拉尔特斯之子奥德修斯的伴侣，他们狂妄地宰杀了我的牛。”我非常喜欢那些牛，无论我身上环心密布的天空，或是在我从天空返回地面的时候，如果他们不为我的牛做相应的赔偿，我便沉住哈德斯，在那里照耀众文明。吉云神宙斯立即回答太阳神这样说：“赫利奥斯啊，
，你还是照耀不死的神明和有死的凡人，留在山长谷的大地上，我会立即向快船抛出闪光的霹雳，把它在九色大海中央打成碎片。我从美发的卡里普索那里听说这些话，他说他是从引路神赫尔墨斯那里听说。当我回到大海岸边，快船跟前，我一个个连力责备，但我们也想不出任何补救办法，因为牛已被宰杀。这时，众神明立即向同伴们显示阵仗，牛皮开始爬动，叉上的牛肉吼叫，无论生肉或已被制熟，都有如牛鸣。我的忠实的同伴们就这样连续六天。每一餐捕捉来的赫里奥斯的上等的好牛，当克罗诺斯之子宙斯送来第七天时，能唤起狂风暴雨的气流开始止息。我们立即登船，驶向宽阔的海面，斜立竖起桅杆，扬起白色的风帆。当我们驶离海岛，已不见任何陆地。广阔的天宇和无尽大海浑然一片时，克罗诺斯之子把浓重的乌云密布在湾船上空，云翼下面大海一片昏暗。船只未航行很长时间，强劲的西风立即呼啸刮来，带来猛烈的暴风雨。一阵疾驰的风流把桅杆前面两侧的缆绳吹断，桅杆后倾，所有的缆绳一起掉进舱底。桅杆倒向船尾，砸向舵手的脑袋，他的整个颅顶被砸得粉碎，立即有如一名潜水员从甲板掉下。勇敢的心灵离开了骨架。宙斯又打起响雷，向船只抛下霹雳，整个船只发颤，受宙斯霹雳打击，硫磺弥漫，同伴们从船上掉进海里，他们像乌鸦一样在发黑的船体旁边逐浪浮游，神明使他们不得返家园。这时我仍在船上奔跑，只见那风浪把船板剥离船梁，光梁在波涛里飘荡，桅杆连着船梁。桅杆仍然联系着一根被用牛皮揉成的坚固结实缆绳，我用那缆绳把船梁和桅杆一起捆绑，坐到上面，任凭险恶的风浪飘荡。I'm Wang Wei from Fudan Department of Philosophy, and I'm going to read you the last part of the Twelfth Book of Odyssey, namely from line 426 to 453. Now I begin. Εν τέ το εξεπίρους με να καύσα το λαίνα τι του ον, έβατε πεπί να το σώκα περον εμα αλγία του μόι, ο πρέτητεν το λοέν αναμετρήσαιν η καρύπτη, πα νύχιος περομεν χαμάτε ελιόι ανι όντι, έλτον επί έλτον επί σκυλές κοπελον δε νε τε καρύπτη, χέμενα νε ρύπτες ε ταλάσες χαλμυρον χυδόν, Alta ego poti macron erinea oxos alertes, poi prospius e comentos nupiteri sulle pe econ, uptes de rixae posenem et omute pe bena, rita e calare casecon a pe odroides anomotoi, macroide e mecanoide cateschi aion carupti. Non le meos e comerno rex e messei e nobisso, histon cae tropinautis e al domenoi demona, El Tom, obse mos te pidor con a ne a correcten a neste, crino nec ni a bona di casto menon a ize on, te mos te etat ge dura caruptios exerva alte, pecat ego catuperte podas cae fere peresta, meso e den du pesa par experimentia dura, pens omenos te pitois e die res acersine meisi. Sculen du pere asse pater dan dronte te onte, e si de en munga ke du pep dugo aipio non entro, en ten de neima peromen de catene de menucti. Ne so ne so gugi e pelasan te o enta calypso, na e e ut locamos de ne te o sal de e e sa. He me pile de comete, tito e tate me mitologia o, E de gato tido se meo te omen eni oikon, soi te ka e ti moe anoto e tronde mo estin, au ti sa ri zeilo se rei mena mitologia omen. Now that's all. Thank you very much.